what is up? My name is Fancy Year 17 and I'll be your YouTuber today. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about the M36 gun motor carriage and the M18 gun motor carriage. So these tanks were built in World War II and saw service well past World War II. Um, no, notab <laughs> notably, the M18 also served in the Korean War. Um, but first, we're going to get in to the Hellcat. So the Hellcat, uh, originally designated the 76 millimeter gun motor carriage, was famed for its speed during World War II and in the Korean War. Like I said, it was designed by Buick's Motor Division of General Motors, and it was manufactured in 1943 i'm sorry i i just made that video earlier and i'm just kind of messing myself up here um it weighed 17 tons which is not a lot for a tank uh you take a look at your modern tanks and they weigh much more than 16 or 17 tons and 17 tons is considering it's combat weight so combat weight means it has all of its shells which is 45 and then it plus it has its crew 50 caliber ammunition the whole 10 well, whole nine yards, as the saying goes. Um, its maximum armor thickness was 25.4 millimeters. And for all you technical people, 4.8 inches thick. Uh, and it was mounted with the 76 millimeter M1A1 gun, the 76 millimeter M1A1C gun, and the M1A1 II. Uh, all holding 45 rounds of ammunition. Um, it was carried by a Continental R975 G1, um, which created 350 horsepower um, and generated 260 kilowatts of energy at 2400 RPM. And in its later models, it was mounted with the R975 C4 variant, which made 400 horsepower at 2400 RPM. And it had a power to weight ratio of 19.8 to 22.6 horsepower. Uh, so it could move. It was set on a torsion bar suspension, which um, I actually might make a mechanical video about uh, different types of suspensions later. But like I said, torsion bar suspension, it had a 900T torquematic automatic transmission. So this car, or yeah, car. Um, this tank did not have a manual transmission like most tanks did, um, and it was carried this tank to an on-road speed of 55 miles per hour. That is fast. Um, that's 89 kilometers per hour and an off-road speed of 26 miles per hour or 42 kilometers per hour. Uh, the Hellcat had the best service record among U.S. fielded tank destroyers in World War II. It had a higher kill-to-loss ratio than any other fielded tank destroyer by the United States Armed Division. Um, and starting in 1941, the tank destroyer um, force was assembled. This was essentially the United States' response to, we're going to delegate, you guys need to make tank destroyers develop what what image do you guys want in your in your head um um this was assembled and then eventually led by lieutenant colonel who was eventually promoted to general andrew davis bruce who wanted units capable of speed rather than armor um he wanted not a destroyer class ship but more of a cruiser's not really sure if that makes sense to you guys, but uh, let's put it in this perspective. He thought that the M10 gun motor carriage was too slow, too heavy for what he had envisioned. And eventually he'd think the same thing about the M36 Jackson, which we will be getting into later. Uh, and this gave birth to eventually what would begin to make the M18 GMC and uh, just go into all that. Uh, it was modeled on a M3 light tank chassis, and its first pilot was considered uh, the 57 millimeter gun motor carriage T49, which would lead into the T49, T67, and T70, which were all failed prototypes. And now we're going to talk about the M36 90 millimeter gun motor carriage. Uh, the M36 was the last uh, developed and uh, designated tank hunter of World War II. Uh, 
And the reason it needed to fit that role was that it was noted that the M10 GMC, which carried the 3-inch M7 uh, 75mm gun, um, was only really effective within 500 meters of, uh, you know, German targets that they were facing, so Panthers and Tigers, and they had issues dealing with that. So American engineers were tasked with designing the new 90mm M3 gun, which was... uh, also used on the Pershing. Oh, my apologies. My dog was kind of going crazy. I moved up to my room now. Um, so, this tank was originally designated the T-71. Uh, since that was its pilot prototype name, I couldn't really find any information about the T-71. I couldn't even actually find any pictures of it. Uh, I did find some pictures of what's known as the T-35, which was what started out the uh, M10 GMC program. It was essentially a uh, M4 Sherman with a topless uh, turreted tank uh, turret. (laughs) Sorry, I'm I'm a little tired right now. Um, Due to setbacks in production, this tank would not see service until uh, 1943. Uh, when the uh, M36 would officially be patented with its name. Uh, While the turret was an open top, like the M10, it wasn't actually a repeat of the turret. It had sloped plates, and it was used of a a thick casting with a backward-sloping recline, and a bustle was put on the back, acting also as the turret basket to hold ammunition, and also act as the counterweight to the 90mm gun. It was a very heavy gun, uh, especially, uh, you'll see it on many different tanks. Uh, heavy tanks, not so much, but a lot of your medium tanks with the larger caliber weapons, they'll have either a heavier turret, and a lot of your self broke guns have the same thing. Uh, the counterweights, the counter, um, the recoil, and the whole nine yards of how strong these guns are, uh, especially when it comes to weight. You put that heavy of a gun on the front of a tank, and the tank will actually slope downwards, uh, which is why you constantly had heavy turrets, and you couldn't really do that with an open-top turret because of the fact that open tops are meant to reduce the weight of the vehicle. Um, so we are going to kind of talk about the variants uh, so you have your M36, which is your standard variant. It was the uh, uh, addition of the 3-inch GMC uh, M10A1 hole. Oh. So the M10A1 hole was actually just uh, the M10's original design, but on an M4A3 chassis. And then you had your M36B1, which was converted to M4A3 holes, like I said. Then you had your M36B2, which was a conversion of the M4A2 chassis, which was the same as the M10, with a twin uh, 671 um, arrangement uh, GM... Fuck, I can't even read that. 6046 uh, uh, diesel engine. I'm sorry, my brain's just fried right now. Uh, it's, uh, it was up late last night. Uh, we had a party. <laughs> um for anyone wondering, obviously the recording quality is different. This is the morning. Uh, this is July 4th that I'm doing this, not July 3rd when I was recording it. <laughs> uh, but some fun facts about this tank. was known to have issues penetrating um, heavier German armor, such as the King Tiger, um, a M36 Jackson from the 702nd Tank Destroyer Battalion, was credited with knocking out a King Tiger at a thousand yards with a side shot to the turret. Um, Panthers, on the other hand, uh, were normally knocked out around uh, 1,500 yards, and a favorite spot for them to be knocked out was on the left side of the turret cheek on the Panther. That was normally their biggest area of uh, uh, effect when it came to firing at enemy tanks. Um, so I'm kind of going to talk about the wargaming side of the tank. Uh, it's got good TPM. It's got some armor. You can kind of get away with side scraping it a bit. Uh, and uh, just to kind of uh, add on the extra effect of uh, how uh, this tank's different in the game than it is in real life, 
uh, the turret you see on the Jackson is not the same turret it would have had in World War II. So the M36 Jackson's turret you see now is essentially the exact same turret, but um, in more quote-unquote modernized versions, um, that armor you see on the top is actually like bolt-on armor, and in even later models, you can actually just slap the top on. Uh, it was like a, they it was like a segmented roof that you could just put together. Uh, it was meant to just keep the crew safe um, in wars, especially um, when fighting the Germans. It was very easy for the crew to get shot if someone got up and above the tank. Uh, it was just uh, crazy. But stay cool, stay frosty, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.